Okay, uh, welcome to day two of the 2020 IGARS online summer school, remote sensing for volcanoes. Uh, welcome everyone, we're very excited. Uh, had a good day yesterday, lots of great questions and participation and uh, looking forward to another good day uh, today. So two sessions today, session three and session four, uh, looking at uh, thermal and uh, session three, thermal and hyperspectral remote sensing, uh, focusing on volcanoes in Italy, I believe. And then in session four, we'll be looking at thermal remote sensing for volcanoes in Hawaii. And uh, so very excited to have uh, Fabrizia Buongiorno here. Uh, wonderful expertise. We're looking forward to uh, what she's able to share with us. We, I think we'll do it as we did yesterday, where if you have questions, uh, you can write them in the in the chat and I can sort of uh, facilitate. And then I believe there'll also be open periods of time for questions at the ends of the presentation. Um, and I, and uh, Fabrizia can explain a little bit more. So uh, Fabrizia, if you'd like to uh, take over the screen sharing and go ahead and get started. Uh, okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. very much. Thank you, Rani. Okay, so I hope that uh, everybody sees uh, the, the screen. Um, so today I'm, I'm going to present uh, thermal and spectral uh, um, on uh, volcanoes in Italy, and uh, I would like to show you how I organized the, this, uh, this session, so to understand. So I will give a, 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 an introduction uh, on, uh, of course, uh, just uh, to give you a, an overview of what is the INGV, the Italian National Institute for Geophysics and Volcanology, how we work. Uh, then an introduction, but just uh, just to <laughs> I know that it's very you know it's very known, but uh, on volcano phenomena because uh, we have uh, these many active volcanoes in Italy, and I will start uh, to show uh, uh, some some uh, information about the Etna and Vesuvio Campi Flegrei, which is uh, the area that I will cover today in the discussion and uh, of course I want to I will give some uh, information on what are the ground monitoring systems uh, which we, we are very useful uh, to validate and integrate the, uh, the satellite measurements. Okay and then I have a, I, the first sessions uh, will start to go from uh, the elements uh, to use uh, uh, the thermal uh, remote sensing data and uh, to, uh, to monitoring volcanoes. So also I would like to give you uh, an overview of what are the current uh, and also the, the coming um, space systems that could be used uh, to monitor or to measure volcanic phenomena. Uh, few, there are many thermal mission concepts ongoing uh, at the moment, uh, and uh, some uh, new as echo stress that was launched uh, uh, shortly some time ago on the International Space Station. And, uh, and also I will show then some uh, ac uh, actual activities that INGV does uh, uh, to monitor remote sensing, uh, to monitor volcanoes with remote sensing data. And the third uh, session, I will, I will go more deeply in uh, what are the activities that our observatories are doing, uh, the observatory on Vesuvio and the observatory on Mount Etna are doing uh, with, the, with, the, with the satellite data and uh, the integration with the ground monitoring. Uh, I, I finally, I will show uh, the international collaboration, of, especially for Mount Netna, that is a, a natural laboratory. And there, there are, I think, interesting information uh, on uh, open access to the Etna laboratories of INGV, where uh, students and researchers can apply. 
and uh, I see I put here open questions, but of course, as Ryan said, uh, uh, any question can be um, made during the presentation, uh, so we will have a more in an interactive uh, uh, session uh, instead of waiting the end uh, of, of the meeting. So let's, uh, let's start. Uh, INGV, uh, the headquarters of INGV is in Rome. Uh, is, uh, where uh, we are mainly in Rome, there is uh, the, the 24 hour surveillance for uh, earthquake activities uh, on all the national territory. So, but we have uh, many sessions, uh, many, many locations in Italy. So um, we have, uh, as I said, the, the Napoli, in Napoli, there is the, observa the Osservatorio Vesuviano. On Etna, there is uh, the Osservatorio Etnea. And then we have uh, uh, other, other locations in Milan, Palermo, Pisa, Bologna, and uh, different laboratories, as you see on the right, uh, um, uh, in, in many other, uh, part of Italy, especially uh, in, inside universities. So we have in Calabria and we have in Puglia and so on. So what uh, we are, how we are organized, uh, we have uh, a earthquake uh, uh, department, which uh, of course uh, do seismic monitoring, geodesy, of course, using SAR techniques and then I have international and educational activities. The same happens for volcanoes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you, we have uh, the, the active volcano surveillance for Italy and then uh, research international education too. And for the environment, so that it's a very large uh, uh, department, we are many um, do studies on climate and geomagnetism, polar regions, uh, environmental pollution and cultural heritage. So INGV covers many, many activities. Uh, we have uh, different infrastructures that are uh, uh, monitoring, uh, say, uh, active monitor networks. Uh, and uh, we had uh, a pretty large uh, remote sensing activity starting at least uh, 20, 25 years ago. Uh, and, and now we are covering many different applications. Um, just to have an over, give you an overview of the network, so we have uh, more than 300 stations, seismic stations, and around the same number of uh, GPS stations uh, to understand the geodynamics of, of Italy and Mediterranean area. And of course, uh, we have local monitoring system for volcanoes, especially, so what uh, we are talking today. Uh, Fabrizio, so, there was a just a quick question. Do you all work on landslides at all? Nope. Uh, let's see. Maybe I have. Uh, okay. Let's see. Yeah. Because I don't see the chat in the in this moment. Mm -hmm. What is this? Participants. Just a second. I will say. Oh, I may do the stop share for a second and try to see. Oh, share Okay, just a second that I, I need to look at the okay. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so um, where I see the, the, the question, sorry, and, uh, on the chat. Uh, yes, and I just uh, conveyed, there was one question asking if you work on landslides in your institute. Uh, okay, so, well, uh, we do work on landslides mainly due to the earthquake-induced landslides. Uh, the people, the, the colleagues that work so with, uh, with uh, especially radar remote sensing, so with the inter SAR interferometry, they are also 
looking to, to the land slides. But uh, um, we are mainly related to, to earthquakes. So that's, that's our main... Uh... Very good, thank you. Okay, let's, let's go back to the sharing. Um, yeah. Okay, I was here. So, so uh, we, I was just saying about uh, the many, uh, the many uh, networks that were that are present uh, on on uh, managed by INGV. Um, so, what about uh, the remote sensing? As I, I was saying, uh, we had a lot of uh, activities regarding uh, volcanoes uh, uh, that are. Uh, including the, uh, the, the radar, the, the interferometry, the thermal mapping, the gassing of the plumes, uh, fusion rays, and volcanic clouds, and chain detections, uh, understanding lava flow. So a, a very large uh, uh, system of uh, possible products that could be related to, to remote sensing. So now, just uh, start to, to talk about the volcanoes that, uh, of course, Italy uh, is uh, located, as you see on the maps, uh, on one of these areas where uh, volcanic activity happens. So we know that uh, they are on the, um, some, most of them are, are on the, on the, located on the plate boundaries, but uh, no, not only. And, uh, and Italy uh, is, uh, is, has uh, this uh, volcanic, acti volcanic activity uh, since a long, long time. And as the, the more, the, uh, with the, uh, uh, Iceland is the one that have the most uh, um, volcanoes, active volcanoes in Europe. Of course, there are other parts of the world uh, with much more volcanoes than Italy. So, um, as I was saying, uh, in terms of, uh, of activities, uh, we have to, to manage uh, all the, the possible uh, uh, hazards that uh, may come from, uh, from uh, the volcano activity, especially because uh, we are a very high populated region and as happened in other parts, uh, we have to, to, to use uh, all our capabilities uh, to, to prevent damages to people and activities uh, by volcanic uh, eruptions. And, uh, and so we have to, to use uh, all, uh, all, all is available. And satellites, I think uh, nowadays, uh, start to become a very reliable and very uh, useful uh, uh, data source that, of course, has to be uh, integrated with other observations. So here are the, the volcanoes that uh, we have in Italy. So uh, you see that some are in the sea. So we have many below water and uh, some, uh, of course, are islands like the, the um, I, don't, I, I can use this. So those are the, the Olean Islands. And then we have Etna here in Sicily and uh, Vesuvio here and Campi Flegrei here, Ischia, and those are not active volcanoes, but not completely dead volcanoes. These are very near Rome. Actually, it's where I live, <laughs> the Colli Albani. And then uh, we have those many that are underwater at the pretty deep in the water, but some of them very active. So uh, they are under analysis or under monitoring uh, by INGB, like the, the Marzilli here is a very large one. So let's start to, to give uh, some information on Etna for uh, people that uh, don't know ex all uh, the information about uh, these volcanoes. Uh, Etna is, uh, is, uh, in, is uh, on the east part, uh, northeast part of uh, Sicily Island in Italy. Uh, it's characterized by a, a very persistent volcanic activity. Uh, in the last decades, uh, we, the activity became much more explosive than before. Before we had mainly, Etna was producing lava flows that uh, put in danger cities. But nowadays, uh, they is very is going is having a very uh, frequent explosions so that put in danger uh, the airplane activities because uh, there is an airport just below Mount Etna. So the, the, the monitoring with satellites start to become more and more important. 
So that's a look, you know, and Etna is, uh, is like that. So it's a big uh, stratovolcano. And as you see, a lot of, uh, of uh, cities, small towns uh, around the, the volcano. And, uh, and that's uh, why it's uh, under, uh, under monitoring all the time. Uh, so we had uh, many, many activities. You see some beautiful pictures uh, that from Catania you can see uh, lava flows or plume or volcano plumes, uh, but also we have earthquakes, so fractures, uh, and so it's uh, it, it's uh, dangerous uh, for for the many many people and and in and uh, towns. Um, we had an increase of uh, of production of uh, of products, so of eruption and also lava flows in the last centuries, and that's uh, made. Uh, uh, the attention to the activity of the volcano increasing uh, by the civil protections uh, in the last uh, decades. Let's uh, give a, have a look of, of Campi Flegrei and Vesuvio. Uh, those are placed uh, near or inside Naples. Vesuvio is, is very well known. All the, the, the activities of the past in the Roman time is that Vesuvio is a quiescent volcano, but of course it can erupt any days. What is more dangerous is Campi Flegrei. Campi Flegrei is, uh, is thermally active and is being very increasing activities in, in terms of deformation and thermal activities in the last years. So Vesuvio, here you just give you some uh, pictures uh, of, uh, of the explosivity index uh, and uh, the past eruptions uh, of, of the Vesuvio, just to give you the view how is, uh, we have to, to look after. Naples is just under the, the, this volcano. That's a sulfate area where uh, I will show then later some data. Uh, this sulfate area is a crater. It's, uh, it's, uh, this is small white stuff here, but is uh, the place where there is the most of the thermal activities. And uh, unfortunately, we had uh, some accidents in the last year. Some people died just because walking around, they were following some pits with uh, CO2 and they died, unfortunately, by the, the gas emissions. Uh, but is it, this area is inflating all the, in the last years, very pretty much. So civil protection is uh, having an evacuation plan ready. It may erupt. We don't know when, but it may erupt. And we don't know exactly the size of the eruptions, but it, we have more than 500,000 people to move from this area in case uh, uh, of an eruption. So satellite again are uh, contributing to the monitoring and it's an important, so it's an important uh, data source, as I said. So the Vesuvius uh, is, uh, is more, uh, you know, it, it's a pretty dangerous too and has a, a very high, say, explosivity uh, kind of volcano with the pyroclastic flow, full, uh, flows, ash fallout, and can uh, determine really a, 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 a catastrophe on, on a city like Naples. Uh, at the moment, uh, it doesn't have much activities shown, but uh, is, uh, yeah, is in constant monitoring. Let's have a look at what are the ground monitoring system, because then we will talk about more uh, later about them when uh, we will look at the satellite data uh, and uh, procedures uh, to, to combine those data. So Etna has a really a very big uh, local network system. So as a, a, a GPS and size and, size and uh, infrasonic networks, uh, tilt meters, uh, video cameras that uh, are very useful because video cameras are posed looking to the summit area and so if uh, in a lava fountain is or more uh, thermal activity happens, it can be seen by the, 
by this uh, by by the cameras and let the cameras send the signal directly to IGV monitoring rooms that are open 24 hour on 20, on 24 hour base. So I, 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 all the all this the data are in uh, mainly in real time. There are some uh, other measurements that are made uh, in, uh, in campaigns, and uh, and so all the signal uh, are uh, can be monitoring. Uh, in, in real time uh, during uh, uh, the 24 hours. For what regards the Vesuvio, the same, and we have a 24 hour surveillance. Uh, again, we have a, a seismic station, uh, we have uh, the, um, the GPS station and, uh, and a thermal camera too that are very important. I will show those uh, in, in, in details uh, later because they are related to the thermal monitoring uh, where a user with, for the thermal monitoring with uh, for using satellite data. Um, also in the in the in, in the Napoli regions of Vesuvian Campi Flegrei, there are also underwater activity. So we had uh, different uh, uh, measurements also for the to, to understand what is going on in, in the area underwater that are still part of the volcano, as you see, especially in the Golfo di Pozzuoli here on the on the left. Uh, that's just a big volcano altogether, and so we ha we have to be careful uh, because maybe the activity may start in the water or underwater. I would say um, those are instead per per periodic surveys uh, that uh, needs uh, to make. Uh, uh, the understanding the, the change in uh, in uh, the formations so and uh, so and also measure gravity and uh, and uh, and so on but uh, they are regularly made and integrated with the permanent networks moreover uh, finally i would like to say that uh, we try to integrate all this information it's a not an easy task uh, we made uh, usually uh, there are scientific research and also activity towards uh, the civil protection that is uh, our uh, um, con we, we work under contract for civil protection giving uh, the information from the permanent networks, but also giving us um, a report that can be daily, uh, weekly, um, and, and, and every six months, depending on, on the state of activity. And in these reports, so we have to put in the information about uh, everything is, uh, is uh, measured by NGV, and, and uh, we also use uh, um, for to use we use satellite data uh, when we can of course uh, have uh, say in, uh, systematic products because civil protection requires systematic products and not uh, only results that are from uh, uh, research activities they have to be constant uh, information sent to them uh, so uh, we work in this way. Uh, we had uh, to produce uh, uh, information for knowledge and prevention crisis and, uh, and post-crisis. Uh, that's how the civil protection uh, uh, works in Italy, but I think it's everywhere. And so we have to combine uh, all this data. And uh, a satellite can provide uh, those information um, for... Uh, for um, for all these uh, three phases. Uh, uh, today, of course, I, I don't have, <laughs> although I have three hours, I will focus only on, mainly on, only on thermal uh, analysis uh, and not on all uh, the other issues uh, that uh, you may be also hear in the other sessions, uh, but uh, just not to make the things too confused because uh, the activities uh, are very large. And so I would like to focus on thermal analysis uh, in this, in this uh, uh, in this course. Well, Fabrizia, there is just a, a, a quick question. Is Vesuvius still considered an active volcano? Of course, uh, actually it's very active. It's, uh, it's, it's not uh, uh, giving uh, any arrest uh, informations uh, uh, or shows any arrest. 
but uh, we know that it will erupt sometimes. Uh, from my, my previous slides, you see some information. The history of eruption of the Mount Vesuvio is, uh, is very long, uh, and uh, the last uh, big uh, eruption was uh, during in, uh, in, in, in 1945, uh, during uh, the, 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 the Second uh, World War. Uh, and, and so we are not, uh, I think, we cannot sleep <laughs> on that. We are more worried about uh, the Campi Flegrei. So uh, the two volcanoes are still very active. Okay, um, thank you. If there is uh, now any question about uh, the general, uh, say, the introduction, the INGV activities uh, before I'm starting now to uh, set the, the first uh, set, the first part of, of the of the the, the course, uh, the lesson on uh, and, and focusing, of course, now on satellites, uh, please, uh, or you can uh, do it uh, later. I I can interrupt uh, any time you want. Um, I have, sorry, some difficulty to see at the same time the chat, but maybe I will try to, to find a way I don't see it in my, in my screen. But, well, that's uh, okay. And again, I can convey the questions if, if that works okay for you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, for me it's fine. Okay, uh, so if uh, there is no specific questions at the moment, I proceed uh, with the the first part. Well, it, so it looks like there, there are a few questions that you may, may cover. One is asking about the different types of satellite data that you use for monitoring, um, uh, which you may get into, and then <clears throat> asking about basically data fusion of LIDAR data sets or earthquake data with other types of data, including synthetic aperture radar data. So just some questions about the different types of data streams that are, are coming in and being used for some of the monitoring. Uh, okay, just uh, I will uh, give more information uh, during part one, but since uh, the, some questions are, are around about uh, the, the SAR that is not included here, I would like to answer that, uh, uh, of course, uh, the, 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 the seismic uh, measurements that we have uh, uh, by the network that are in real time uh, acquired by INGV are used, uh, used very, very frequently and combined very frequently with the SAR and SAR acquisitions because nowadays we have the many satellites with SAR instrument different bands because we can use the band C or or band X but we have the in Italy have the Cosmos Chimed constellations that gives data very pretty often and uh, and, and Com uh, copernicus uh, sentinel one and, and uh, of course uh, rather sat and japanese uh, uh, satellites so we use them to uh, to um, combine with uh, both seismic uh, measurements and GPS measurements uh, to understand uh, the, the deformations, uh, the, the velocity of the deformations. So those are usually uh, produced uh, uh, mainly when there is activity in volcanoes because uh, uh, but uh, we are working to have uh, the, the data or the products from uh, SAR made uh, uh, regularly and and so uh, they and so they can be fully integrated with the with the GPS and seismic network and especially on, on Mount Etna Observatory there is already uh, systems developed for that uh, so if there is any interest uh, on uh, procedures uh, just write to me and I will uh, turn the the question to my colleagues uh, on um, on uh, Observatorio Vesuvia uh, Observatorio Etneo the same happens also in in Fort Vesuvio and Campi in, in Campi Flegrei uh, for the rest of satellite uh, I will show just in a while uh, information on what we used in our procedures in more detail so I, I may be answering in a few minutes on that um, so I don't know if but there are any other questions uh, may, before I, I go on or? no I think that was great uh, there was just um, 
in terms of the data stream, are LIDAR data also included in the observations? Uh, LIDAR, LIDAR data, we do use uh, um, two, two, two types. Of course, uh, we have used LIDARs uh, on, on airplane to measure uh, the, the, to measure um, DTM in the tails, especially of summit areas, like for Mount Etna, we have many uh, variations. So to make a very precise DTM, we use LIDARs, but also we use LIDARs uh, to monitor uh, LIDARs that looks from uh, the ground to the, the, the atmosphere, to, lo to look at the, the plume composition for the particles uh, of, uh, of volcanic plumes. And in, on Etna, uh, there is a LIDAR, um, a permanent LIDAR uh, mounted uh, in, the, in the vicinity of, uh, of the summit area of, um, of, uh, of Mount Etna. So we use LIDARs in these two ways, uh, especially. Um, and uh, again, they are integrated uh, with the measurements made um, from other uh, instruments. We have, uh, I will not uh, talk a lot about, I will not talk about the plumes because uh, it's a very large uh, activity and we have, uh, um, and we have uh, ground stations, permanent ground station with the mini doors uh, to measure SO2, especially from uh, Mount Etna and also in the Olial Island, like Stromboli Volcano. And so those are uh, very much used uh, also to, to, uh, to get the, the flux of, uh, of the SO2 coming from, uh, from the plume, uh, the gassing plume of Mount Etna and Stromboli and uh, also on Vulcano Island. Uh, those data could be now integrated with the, with the satellite measurements, but uh, uh, of course, uh, um, at the moment, satellites uh, do, not, do not have uh, uh, the, 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 the resolution, the special resolution on, uh, on, uh, to understand that the, in detail uh, the gas emissions from the gassing plume is not so, so performing, performing, but I think it's improving. So, um, so th those are... Uh, very, very promising area for, in, for integrating in a, in, a, in a real monitoring system, permanent monitoring system, those satellite measurements. So... Um, Great, thank you. Yeah, I think that's good for questions you, right now. <laughs> but of course, uh, uh, any other questions are, are welcome. Um, so let's uh, now go to this first part. Uh, I will briefly give uh, some uh, general, not thermal uh, information, uh, and uh, I will uh, focus on uh, thermal uh, remote sensing. And, uh, and I want to give uh, this uh, small overview of the instruments and, and satellites that, of course, uh, they are very well known, but uh, for us, that we had to use them uh, permanently um, means uh, to be careful that the data arrives and are in the right formats. And so those are things that uh, we need to know uh, in, in order to make the product. So in any, anyone that uh, needs to, to understand how to develop a monitoring system needs to understand very well how these submissions work, how the data are available and so on. Um, I will give uh, then some uh, say view of, of what uh, we do to to, uh, to measure the, the to to understand uh, how the the, the eruptions are uh, or the, especially for Etna when we have a starting activity how we we measure how we detect it uh, so there are many systems around the world but of course uh, we had to develop our own system and uh, we are very happy eventually to share with you uh, uh, information anyone is interested on that. And uh, we did also participate uh, with, uh, with ESA, the, the, the European Space Agency, to develop uh, some of these, uh, um, uh, what they call uh, the, um, uh, the platforms uh, to make the, the product, uh, the, the satellite product, available, uh, uh, say, uh, worldwide. Um, 
at worldwide uh, dimensions. And in this case, uh, we participate to make a, a products about the, the, the temperature, to measure the surface temperature on active volcanoes. And I will show a little bit on that. Uh, so let's uh, go to the to this uh, to the <laughs> to attack the core of the problem. We have to measure uh, temperature of the surface. So thermal thermal remote sensing deal with this problem. <laughs> that I say a problem because it's a diff it's a complex uh, um, measurements, especially on land. Uh, maybe a little bit easier on on the water, but uh, uh, since we are looking to volcanoes, we are on the, on the land, and so we have to deal with the temperatures. And then, as you see, uh, look a little bit the equations on to emissivity. And um, so we had to to use uh, data that uh, are uh, low resolution or high resolution, and depending, uh, of course, uh, uh, so to to um, at which level, at which precision or accuracy you want the measurements. Usually, at low resolution, you don't uh, really uh, look at uh, at the. Um, uh, the inform you don't take to into detail the information on on uh, emissivity, which is uh, part of uh, the problem. Uh, but uh, if with high resolution, uh, we had to uh, we had to take into account very precisely this uh, this uh, issue on the these characteristics that is an intrinsic characteristic of the surface. But let's have uh, some uh, say uh, re re review of this uh, that uh, probably is well known uh, to most of us. Uh, so first of all. Where we are in the electromagnetic spectrum, uh, we are looking at uh, the thermal infrared that uh, goes uh, from uh, three microns. Uh, that well, that's uh, the mid infrared, but let's say from three microns uh, to twelve or uh, fifteen microns, and then of course uh, we have uh, the other. Uh, we have uh, the, the the far infrared, and then the, the microwaves, and uh, we can have a, a different kinds of approach in terms of uh, number of channels, uh, many or uh, multi, multi, multi spectral or hyperspectral, but uh, in, in any case we have to deal with the characteristics of the surface and the atmosphere in this area. So first of all, uh, on the since we are dealing with the surface, and that's the problem where it's placed, uh, we, are, we know that in interaction with the radiation, in the case of thermal infrared, uh, the, 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 we have two sources. One is uh, the, the, the sun, the, one is in the, during the daytime. We have radiation coming to, to, from the sun to the earth, but uh, then it's emitted again. So that depends from the thermal characteristics of the, of the body. So in any case, the reflect the reflect the part the absorb the, the part that is absorbed and the part that is transmitted is the characteristic of any uh, element any element of the surface. Um, and so those are. Uh, Pose that the sum of these three elements is uh, known to be one. So we, when uh, we are dealing with opaque materials, uh, we don't have the, uh, the transmission, the transmissivity part, so we have reflectivity and absorptivity uh, that is one. So we have to take into account those, those characteristics. The other part is uh, how we can uh, define uh, the the, 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 the spectral radiant uh, uh, behavior of, of, uh, of a body. In this case, uh, we look to lava flow or to lava materials that both are uh, cold and hot. But uh, of course, uh, we have to know how uh, they respond uh, to the to the radiations, and so what the, the, the instruments uh, on the satellites or also airborne measures uh, from those uh, surfaces. So the, 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 first, uh, the first approach, uh, as uh, we know, is to use uh, uh, a, a, an assumption of a, an ideal uh, uh, material that uh, is uh, the black body. 
and um, so the black body is uh, as uh, an emissivity of one and uh, and uh, is uh, an ideal body as you say uh, he, he absorbs and emits uh, all the, the radiation that uh, arrives to, to the to this uh, ideal uh, system but of course so it's not the case of the real surface um, so the, what just, I uh, don't, we'll go in detail of equations, but uh, what uh, we will deal of what all our procedures is uh, mainly uh, the Planck equations that uh, relate, that uh, say, um, related the, the, uh, the temperatures and emissivity of, of a body that, uh, and in this case, uh, 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 of course, uh, we have uh, to, to understand how uh, these uh, characteristics works in order to be able to separate or emissivity from the temperature and have uh, most precise uh, measurements. And so this is uh, the big challenge of all the systems that are working from uh, remote. So, so this is uh, the relations uh, that you see for a black body. You don't see the, the emissivity in the equations. The temperatures is, uh, is uh, related only from uh, the, the wavelengths and uh, the, 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 the radiation of the, of the system itself and the constants that are uh, well known. But uh, for real bodies, uh, we have also to take into account the emissivity. Um, of course, uh, also still in the black body uh, descriptions, uh, we can uh, uh, we know that uh, the total emissive, uh, emissive power uh, is uh, a function of the temperature or effort uh, um, or, um, power of, of the temperature because uh, is uh, what you find under the curve uh, at, for that temperatures. And so depending if, if uh, the mean, what uh, is the, the body temperature, and then you can calculate uh, uh, the, the, the total emissive power. And so all these equations are, are pretty known, but are the base of, our, of any of our approach on satellite data. Um, Another point is very well known is that the Wayne displacement law that uh, tell us uh, if, uh, for a, um, at the wavelength of where is the maximum amount of energy is, uh, is radiated, we can uh, uh, understand, uh, so depending, this, this depends from the temperature of the body, so we can, uh, we can see where the, the temperature, uh, where the, the peak of uh, the mission is, uh, is uh, located. And that's very important because uh, uh, when uh, you, we, we use uh, uh, different channels uh, at different wavelengths in a satellite system, uh, they will be more efficient depending uh, on what is the, the temperature, ta the, the target temperature of our system. And so uh, this is uh, very important uh, uh, to understand uh, you know, when we plan or when we design a, a, a satellites, especially when we want to measure um, and we don't want to saturate uh, the, the signal uh, of, of, uh, of the system itself. So as you know, the, 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 the radiation of the Earth, in fact, is, is uh, measure at the best uh, in the in the region between 8 uh, and 12 microns so in the thermal infrared where hot targets uh, as the started by the sun is very hot uh, you have to use uh, the maximum radiation is emitted at uh, much uh, lower uh, wavelengths so let's go back to the problem of emissivity that is the one that makes the algorithms to retrieve or to separate temperature and, and, uh, and emissivity for real surface uh, pretty challenging. Um, okay, so we don't have black bodies as we saw in the general equations, but we have gray bodies mainly. So what means that if we, model a temperature, what we call 
the temperature, uh, brightness temperature for a, 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 the, for a, a surface, uh, considering the, the, the emissivity equal to one, uh, we are not, of, of course, we make errors in retrieving the temperatures, because as you see, uh, the, the, what, the, 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 the black body temperatures uh, of, uh, of the estimation of the black body temperature for a surface uh, is, uh, is, is not uh, the, the, real, uh, the, real, uh, the real temperature due to the fact that uh, there is uh, the, the emissivity in, in the equation. So many problems uh, uh, or many uh, big, a big challenge is to have the, uh, uh, say procedures and uh, techniques or to measure directly or to estimate the, the emissivity. And uh, of course, uh, for some, so for some uh, um, surface, uh, it's easier. And for uh, others, uh, that are, if there are very many variability in the surface in terms of, uh, of, uh, this, of uh, the behavior of, of the surface, in, in, you, you will have, uh, uh, of course, uh, less precise uh, temperature uh, retrievals. Um, what, has, what is generally done in, uh, in this uh, is to have all algorithms that are using uh, uh, known uh, emissivity values for a surface. And so you can find them in, in, a, in a spectral library, especially made uh, provided for the MODIS missions or for uh, the Aster spectral library that can be helped in, uh, in, uh, in uh, evaluate uh, what is uh, the, the emissivity of, of, this, of a specific surface. But of course, uh, is, is not, uh, errors can al always be done in, in, uh, in, the, in the calculation if, you, if the, the emissivity is not properly estimated in, uh, in, the pro in the procedure. This is especially for high resolution data in terms of high resolution, spatial resolution. Fabrizio, uh, yes. if I could interrupt. Yeah. So there was a question asking about when you, uh, Use the term, you know, high resolution or, or low resolution or moderate resolution, talking about thermal remote sensing. What actual, you know, in terms of kilometers or meters, uh, res spatial resolution, pixel size are, are you uh, meaning when you uh, use that? Um, yeah, uh, sorry. Of course, uh, I, I will then give uh, more information on that, but uh, just to be more precise, um, the, the high resolutions are. Uh, for for uh, for systems, satellite system that are in the range or below the one kilometer resolution. So I would say around uh, between uh, 30 and uh, 100 meters are the, the the system that are available at the moment. Uh, say mainly be the best at the moment actually is the 90 meter by Aster and uh, 100 meter or so by by Landsat uh, instruments that uh, on, on satellites, of course, then there are um, uh, platforms that um, that uh, are on airborne platform. So those are, uh, I, I would say, in any case, uh, below one kilometer that are the use, the most used um, system like MODIS, uh, like uh, the AVHR, that uh, uh, Sentinel-3 and so on. They are all about one kilometer uh, and uh, MPP and Novirs and so on. Uh, and then uh, of course uh, the, the geostationary, those uh, have uh, this uh, big pixel. So the emissivity inside of those pixels of one kilometer at least, uh, it's, uh, you have to take into account a mean value, which means uh, that uh, the, the, in this case, uh, the, the error is uh, lower than if you use uh, the 100 meter like Aster, where you see details. So if I'm uh, in, in an area where you have uh, maybe half a vegetation and half a, a bare surface, or maybe you have, uh, um, you have um, the, um, uh, urban area or even this uh, water, things change and temperature can be not precise. Of course, depend on what you are doing, 
if you need to know the measurement of the retrieval of temperatures very very precise, very with high accuracy, uh, you need to, to find a way to, to uh, make uh, the, the assumption more, more correct. So that, that's uh, the, the main difference between high temperatures and low temperatures. Great. And would you mind going back one slide? Yes. Or I guess one more slide where you had the curves? Yes. So just to kind of recap for some folks, there were some indication that maybe we're moving a little a little fast but the so for perfect black bodies uh, to retrieve temperature the mathematics for that is very well understood and we have these nice clean smooth curves yeah. but for real objects they're more complicated and so we have these you know dips and wiggles and 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 um, distract or it takes away from that smooth curve and so that's kind of the challenge of uh, thermal remote sensing is for real objects to try to uh, get at accurate measurements of, of temperature. And as you just mentioned, that problem is even more complicated when you have uh, mixed pixels, meaning that there's materials with different types of emissivities all combining to uh, produce the signal that the satellite receives for that particular pixel. So, and, and that's the big challenge, or one of the many challenges of thermal remote sensing. And so that's what you're describing. Yes, thank you very much, Ryan. I just to make an example, when we made our system working like over Stromboli Island, that is a small island of a few square kilometers, uh, if I'm using uh, uh, the geostationary, like the, the meteosat, Hmm. Uh, Fabrizia, uh, look, sounds like your um, signal is, is dropping out a little bit. Um, uh, I'm not, oh, looks like we just lost, lost her uh, screen sharing, um, but hopefully she can uh, add right back in. Sorry for the technical uh, difficulties, you guys, um, but I believe that she's trying to reconnect and just lost her her connection. So she should be adding in shortly. 